welcome back to day four of Maker Fun Factory. You're going to have a wonderful day today, learning all about God's immense love for us. Today's Bible point is, God will always love you. Wow, God! I did it, I did it, I did oh, it! Oh, Ian, your invention! Hi. Oh! Ian, are you okay? Of course, I have an incredibly high pain threshold. Oh, good, I'm glad. <laughs> oh, my back, you, you hit my owie! Oh, Ian, I'm so sorry. Your invention. What? Do you think it's broken? What? No, no way. I built it to be indestructible. I'm sure it's... Oh no! <laughs> My invention! Oh Ian, I'm sure it'll be okay. No, it's hopeless. I just wanted to make something special for my mom's birthday, but now she's going to be so disappointed and sad. It's alright, your mom will always love you. It reminds me a little bit of our Bible point. God always loves you. Wow, God! I don't know, I mean, I don't think so. Sometimes I make a lot of mistakes and I mess up. I mean, I'm good at a lot of things like sports and music, but sometimes I'm not a nice person. I can be a stinker. It's all right. We all do things we shouldn't do, like not include our friends or, or brag or be a stinker. I mean, I guess you're right and I'm sure my mom will still love me, but I just wanted to make her something special. And I was sure that she was going to love it, but... It's okay. We can fix it. I think Ian needs some encouragement. I mean, okay. If you guys say so, I'll get started on the invention right away. And this time, it'll be even better than before. Okay. Just watch out. Your shoe's on top! Oh, no. I'm okay. I hope Ian does okay with his invention. We'll check in with him later. Have a great day today, kids, and I'll see you back here. Remember, God always loves you. Wow, God! wait to tell you guys today's Bible story. What you're going to hear today is the most important information you'll ever receive. In fact, what happens in today's Bible story is the most important event 
in the history of the world. So let's get started. On the night our Bible story starts, it was the time of the Passover celebration in Jerusalem. So Jesus was over in Jerusalem eating a meal with his close friends. Even though he was with his closest friends, the Bible tells us that Jesus was deeply troubled. He knew that one of his friends was going to betray him. So do you guys know what betray means? We usually talk about our friends stabbing us in the back. So maybe you've heard that. But to betray someone is to turn against that person. So Jesus knew exactly which friend was going to turn against him. Jesus could have stopped the betrayal, but instead he just said, hurry up and do what you're going to do. When Jesus said that, he was moving one step closer to the cross. After the dinner, Jesus said to his friends, I don't have much more time to talk with you guys because the ruler of this world approaches, and by that he means Satan. He said, Satan has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me. Come on, let's be going. Jesus knew that this was going to be the hardest night of his life. He could have easily run away, but instead, Jesus said, come, let's be going. He took one step closer to the cross. After dinner, Jesus and a few friends went to a quiet garden. Jesus wanted to pray to his father, even though he knew exactly what was going to happen that night. He wanted to pray. As he was praying, they heard movements and sounds. It sounded like marching boots, soldiers. When Jesus heard the soldiers coming, he could have taken off in the other direction and hid from them. But the Bible says he stepped forward to meet them. He didn't run, he stepped towards the soldiers. And while he did this, he said, I am the one you want, let these others go. Jesus was taking another step closer to the cross. So once he did that, the soldiers arrested Jesus and they tied him up. The soldiers took him away and they took him to the religious leaders for trial. But these leaders were exactly the people who were trying to get rid of Jesus. The so-called trial of Jesus took place in the middle of the night, not in the light of day. Then the soldiers took Jesus to the Roman ruler of the arena. So this was a man named Pontius Pilate. Even though Pilate knew that Jesus had done nothing wrong, he sentenced him to death. Jesus had never sinned. Not once. Tell me, what is sin? Do you guys know? Sin is doing or thinking something that would disappoint God. So there's something I need to tell you guys. Something that could be surprising. See, sometimes when you look up to the adults in your life, it's easy to look at them and think that they have everything together and that they never do things wrong. Since I'm leading Bible discovery, you may think that I obey God all the time. But the truth is that I'm a sinner too. I do wrong things. Things that I know are wrong, but sometimes I end up doing them anyways. Just the other week, I was on the phone with my brother And I knew it was wrong, but we got in a big fight. We all sin, every single one of us. The only person on earth who never sinned was Jesus. So I confess to sin to you guys, so I want you to take some time. It's your turn to think about what you might have done recently that could upset God. A sin that you've committed And you don't need to tell anyone but God. And God already knows what you did. See, maybe maybe you got in a fight with a friend, or maybe you didn't listen to your parents and what they told you. So if you have paper and want to write it down, you can write down just a word. You could write anger or hitting. 
but think about something that you might have done. Like I said, I'm a sinner, but I know that Jesus died for me in my sins. Me, Emma. And the problem with that is that sin separates us from God. There's nothing we can do to fix it. See, we have all these tools that we can make awesome things with. We can talk to our friends, but we can't fix sin. Believing in Jesus is the only way to get right with God. Only Jesus can take our sins away. Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment for you and for me. So I want you to think about the sin you were thinking. How have you hurt God? The good news is that all those sins go on the cross. And once they're there and we ask forgiveness, then we don't have to worry about them anymore. But the cross and Jesus dying isn't the end of the story. After Jesus died, his friends took his body and put it in a stone tomb. They came back three days later to prepare his body for burial. But when they got there, a crazy thing had happened. The giant stone that they had rolled in front of the tomb was gone. It was rolled away. And when they looked inside, Jesus was gone. He had come back to life. So you can imagine looking in this tomb, looking for your friend, being so sad that he was gone. But instead they found angels who were in bright shining clothes. And they said, Jesus isn't here. He is risen. That's such good news. Jesus is alive. And because he came back to life, that means that Jesus defeated sin and death. When we believe in Jesus, someday we can live with him forever in heaven. And I think we need to celebrate such good news. So throughout this story, we've seen all the different ways that God loves us. And I want you guys to remember today that God will always love you. Right? We got a little, wow, God. But that's a reason to celebrate all day today, all day tomorrow, and every day of your life, you have a God who loves you. So let's take a moment and pray. Dear God, we thank you that you loved us so much that Jesus died on the cross for us. We are so sorry for the ways that we act and do what's wrong, even when we know it's wrong, and that hurts you. But I thank you that that's not too big for you, and that when we come to you, you will forgive us. I thank you that your love covers everything we do, and I pray that we would remember that as we go forward into our day. pray this in your name. Amen. So that's the biggest story of the week, and I hope you guys are as excited about that as I am. Thank you for coming today. I'll see you tomorrow for our last day. Bye guys.
Good morning. Welcome to day four of Imagination Station, Kids Week Maker Fun Factory. Today's Bible point is, God will always love you. So today, we're making a craft that will remind us of that. It's a mirror. Mirrors are round like a circle. When we look at a circle, a circle has no end, just like God's love for us. God's love is forever and ever and he will always love you. To make the mirror for my elementary friends, you will have one wooden mirror and some markers. Decorate the mirror however you would like. Don't forget to decorate the front and the back. Once you are done, take off the plastic film that is over your mirror so that it will be shiny. Then pick up your mirror and look inside. The person that's inside is the person that God made. He made you special and unique, and He will always love you. Remember, God is always there for you, and God will always love you. Have fun! Hi, my name is Kyle, and I'm 12 years old. I like to draw, do sports, play with like action figures or shoot hoops. Kyle is a very nice boy. He likes to play with you and he, he'll be kind with you if you're kind with him. I like to draw a lot of animals. I like to draw like dragons and sharks and I like to draw anime. When I grow up, I want to be an athlete or an architect or an engineer. Kyle's good at math, but I'm a better dancer. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle and his family love to joke around and have a good time, but things haven't always been so happy. Not that long ago, Kyle discovered he has diabetes. This disease has forced Kyle to make some pretty big changes in his life. Before we hear more from Kyle, let's find out what exactly diabetes is. Diabetes means you have too much sugar in your blood. When you eat food with sugar, some of it ends up in your blood. And normally, your body has a pretty cool way of moving that sugar from the blood into your cells. That gives you energy to run, walk, jump, and play. But when you have diabetes, your body can't move the sugar into the cells, so it stays in the blood, and that makes you sick. You can't catch diabetes from a friend like you can catch a cold. Some people just get it. Now, let's get back to Kyle and hear about the time he found out he had diabetes. I remember one day I was out with some friends playing and I started to get really tired and I just wanted to go eat and I was really thirsty so we came home and then I was sitting on the couch all day for like two days in a row. I lost 10 pounds in a week. 
I told Paul to kind of look at Kyle. He looks a little bit skinny. I think he only weighed 70 pounds to start with at that time. So he <laughs> went from like 70 to 60 in less than a week. He was just not himself. Kyle came into our room oh, in the yeah. middle of the night and he had mentioned that he has been going to the bathroom a lot lately. I remember one night I got up like nine times in a couple hours. I mean, it was pretty bad. When he came in our bedroom too, he did say to us, I was like, Mom, we should probably take me to the doctor. After looking at him, um, Paul said, well, you know, let's, let's call the doctor. So we called the pediatrician and they immediately wrote up a paper and sent us over to Children's Hospital. I think the average blood glucose rating is in the 80s and Kyle's was like 800. Immediately they took him to the emergency room and um, confirmed that he does have type 1 diabetes. I was, just wasn't sure about anything at that point. I mean, I was just so out of it. Even though Kyle has diabetes and his life has changed, he still has the opportunity to live an awesome life. He goes to school and gets to hang out with his friends, but every once in a while, he has to prick his finger and check his blood sugar level. When I prick myself, it doesn't really hurt, but sometimes I just get annoyed because maybe like the blood won't come out, so I gotta prick it again and the blood won't come out, so I gotta try a different finger and then I prick it and the blood still won't come out. Once Kyle knows his blood sugar level, his family logs it into a notebook and a spreadsheet so that they can email the results to their doctor. And sometimes before dinner, Kyle even gets an insulin shot that helps his body regulate his blood sugar levels. Ouch! My mom and dad give me the shots for now, but eventually I'll learn how to do it and be able to give myself the shot. It would have been easy for Kyle and his family to doubt God's love in such a hard time. But Kyle's family trusts the Bible when it says this in the book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 2. Your unfailing love will last forever. With that promise from God, Kyle can be sure that God will never stop loving him in the good times and the bad. When this first happened and Kyle was saying, why do I have to have this disease? One of the things that we told him is that God is going to use you for something great and for something bigger. We know that in all things, God works, God works out for good for those who love him. Since I've had diabetes, I've learned that God can fix you when you're broken or help heal you if you're sick. Wow! Isn't it cool to know that even though Kyle was sad when he found out he got diabetes, he still trusts God and trusts that God will take care of him. God will always love you.
Well, that's it for day four for Maker Fun Factory. Did you learn a lot today about God's immense love for us? Can you believe he sent his only son to die for our sins? Remember that God will always love you. Wow, God. See you tomorrow.